Today I will show you 6 tricks in any 10 that make any automation cost less. I personally use all of these helping me save hundreds of dollars per month. And by the end of this video you will know how to build both cheaper and more efficient automations than most people. I also made a breakdown of each tip and put it inside a Google document so you can come back and remember each one. You can find it inside my free school community linked in the description. Okay, so the first trick I'll go over is going to be prompt engineering cheaper AI models. This will essentially cut down your LLM costs by half without actually sacrificing quality. Right now I have this AI agent for this example and this is actually a short form video script writer agent. So I just gave him some instructions on how to actually write those scripts and basically said produce me a YouTube shorts ready script. But the more important thing is it's currently connected to the GPT-5 chat model which is OpenAI's strongest but also most expensive model. So what I'm going to do is type in a video idea to the agent and it should output a video ready script for us. So let's run this and see what happens. And here's the script we got from our AI agent. Since we're using the GPT-5 model, this is essentially the best output we can get from this agent. Only problem is if we go to the logs, we can see that this execution cost us 2,400 tokens. So what we could do to make this cost half as much but still remain the same quality output is copy this exact AI agent then switch out the model with a cheaper one like GPT-5 mini and then go back to our agent with the expensive model, copy this output and put it inside the cheaper's agent prompt as the example of the perfect output. So I would just say here example of the perfect output and then just paste in the output of the expensive agent. And if we actually connect the same video idea to this agent and hit test step, at the end we would get the same quality output for let's see how much, 1198 tokens, which is almost exactly two times less than the previous model. So definitely a cool trick to know when you have a lot of these AI nodes. The next trick I'll go over is going to be dynamic model selection. So let me just show you how it works. Over here I've prepared a bunch of these customer support related questions and what people tend to do in this situation is pass all of these to an AI model like GPT-5 and just roll with it. Right now I only have 20 items over here but you can imagine if this was like a bigger company that gets two, 300 questions per day this would very quickly get very expensive. So a smarter way to go about this would be to implement dynamic model selection. And if we actually connect this you will see that in this AI node I see said rate the complexity of the following content on a scale from 1 to 10. So when I test this and the customer's question is about database migration, you'll see that AI gave it a complexity score of 8 out of 10. Then we use a set node to actually extract only the complexity score, which gets passed on to this if node in which I said if the complexity score is greater than or equal to 5, it should be passed on to this agent, which also has the strongest model connected. But if the complexity score is less less than 5, it would then get passed on to this cheaper AI model. That way we manage to minimize the cost whenever possible. You'll also find all of these free templates inside my free school community. Now the next trick I'll go over is going to be modular agent workflows. To start both of these workflows we have this Gmail trigger node with some example customer complaints. And this first expensive agent has these three tools connected. So two Google Sheets tool and one Gmail tool. And basically in the prompt I said it should analyze the urgency of the customer's problem and store the urgent emails inside a Google Sheet. It should also use the actual Gmail tool to answer to the customer. So in my Google Sheets database I have one sheet with the emails and another one with the urgency. And because this agent has a lot of tools and not a very easy job we need to use the GPT-5 model to get the best output. So if I run this let's see how much this execution cost us. Wow, 7,300 tokens. That's actually really expensive. But we can see that the email is inside the database and the urgency is set to high. And I also got the response email, so at least it works. But how we're actually going to make this much cheaper is by splitting each task into one AI node. So for example, this node will analyze the actual email and the email urgency. We're also giving it a really simple prompt because it's not a very complicated task. Then we have our 
our next agent, which is tasked with storing our emails and the urgency inside the Google Sheets. Also, I'm telling it to not include anything else in the output to minimize the cost as much as possible. Then we have another agent, which is tasked with sending only the email. So the prompt is in this case much simpler as well. And because the prompts for each of these AI nodes are so simple, we can actually use a cheaper model for the reasoning. So let's test this out and see what happens. Okay, it finished. So let's first see if it did everything correctly. And the email information that got stored seems to be a bit shorter than the previous one, but I would say nothing major. And if we check the urgency, it says yes, so that's fine. And we also got the email as well, which is a bit shorter, but I read through it and it says everything it should say. Now let's actually see how much this execution cost us. 1,300 tokens. I mean, that's crazy. So we basically went from 7,300 to 1,300 with the output being 90 to 95% similar. So yeah, definitely a huge money saver right here. The next tip is going to be JSON output structuring. And for this, I have prepared a business meeting transcript and stored it inside a Google Sheet. So basically both of these agents will have the task of summarizing the meeting, but in very different ways. This first agent has the prompt, which just tells him to write an analytical summary of this meeting in plain English. But in this other agent's prompt, instead of saying write the summary normally, I said it should output a strict JSON format in which it would output everything important about the meeting, like the attendees, summary bullets, decisions, and so on. And to make this test completely objective, I will give both agents the exact same AI chat model, which in this case is going to be GPT 4.1 mini. So let's run both agents. Okay, the first agent is done and let's see how much it cost us. 4,300 tokens. And as for the output, this is what we got. As you can see, everything is normal English text. But now let me connect this to the other agent to see what happens. It finished, so let's see the output we got. And everything seems to be in this JSON format. But let's check out how much it actually cost. Only 3,500 tokens. So yeah, definitely a noticeable difference, even when using the exact same chat model. But let's be honest, you'd never store output that looks like this in some kind of database. It's simply too messy. So to fix that, we can use a simple code node that will basically analyze and clean up this entire JSON and output something that looks much cleaner and is ready to be stored. So let me actually show you what it does. This is what we get, a beautiful structural response with everything being in the right place. For this code, you can simply use Claude or ChatGPT, but the easiest way is probably just downloading it for free from my free school community. So the next trick is going to be token pre-processing. What I have in this workflow right now is this HTTP request that gets an entire website page from this NA10 docs website talking about transforming data. So if I actually run this node in NA10, we will get a bunch of HTML from this site. Now sending this off to an AI model directly to analyze and summarize the actual content would be incredibly expensive. So what we could do instead is run it through this code node, which will basically clean up this whole HTML. And if I were to run this, this is what we would get. So only the actual text from the website. Now you could send this off to the AI model right now, but when you have outputs as long as this one, it's usually better to run it through another code node, which will basically split this text into chunks of 3000 characters, which if we execute this, will look like this with a bunch of these chunks that split up the text. And since we have nine items right now, we would put that inside a loop over items node that is connected to this AI node that would basically summarize each chunk individually. And for the output, we would get a bunch of these separated summaries, which can then all be combined together using an aggregate node giving us the complete page summary. So every time you need to summarize huge text files like this one, it's super useful to know this trick. And now I will go over the biggest money saving tip in this entire video, which is batch LLM processing. So for this example, I have prepared 50 customer emails, which this AI model will need to sort into four categories, complaint, question, compliment, and refund. And how you normally do this is using a loop node, passing on each each item one by one into this AI model. But believe it or not, there is a much cheaper way to do this. And that is by batch processing these items. As you can see right now, I set the batch size to 10 instead of one, and I added two code nodes around this AI model. This first one will basically take
take all of these 10 items that we got from the loop node and combine them together into this one chunk of text. This will then get passed onto the AI node that turns each email from this text into a one word category. So you see complaint, question, complaint, refund and so on. And then if we run this last code node, you'll see that we get all of the emails back with the right category attached to them. This way we can process 10, 20 items at a time instead of doing it one by one, which in the end saves us a bunch of tokens. If you want the full breakdown of these tips, I put it all inside a Google document that you can find in my free school community linked in the description. And if you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel for more automation content like this. Have a great rest of the day and see you in the next one.